Welcome to another episode of our Mosaic film series. Uh, we are going to discuss a very old movie, 1955 film called Miracle of Marcelino. It's a Spanish film. Um, I don't know if I should pronounce this rightly, but I think it is, says Marcelino Pani Vino, uh, which is actually Marcelino Bread and Wine, but the English title uh, became The Miracle of Marcelino. Uh, it's kind of part legend, part fairy tale, uh, or part, hist part history about the, uh, the Saint Marcelino and, and some of the, um, uh, and his childhood. Uh, and uh, and the evolution of his sainthood in a way. Uh, and in so many ways, it's a very Catholic film, and that's the one thing you notice. It's a black and white movie, but amazingly photographed. And, you know, when you watch some of this movie, you kind of miss that black and white era and what they used to do with film. And I really liked the way uh, all they had all they had was light and uh, shadow right like right. you know yes. uh, as opposed to colors now we mm -hmm. can experiment with color but what they're doing with this amazing um, essentially it's a story of a little boy uh, orphan growing up in a monastery and we don't want to give the story away a lot um, uh, so uh, um, Jin Jin my friend and movie expert here uh, we are going to talk a little bit about this movie and when I watch this just like I mentioned right now Jin, uh, the the one thing that really stood out very clearly is the idea of the Catholic mysticism throughout mm -hmm. the movie. You know, I mean, if you don't have an appreciation for mysticism, you look at the movie and you know, I've heard, oh, this is propaganda movie. What what do these people say? This doesn't make any sense. Yeah, it mm -hmm. it wouldn't because it's a it's it's a movie for mystic uh, mystics uh, in in that sense. Um, and uh, and the symbolism and all that we will talk about, uh, but one thing that for both of us that really came alive immediately was the simplicity mm -hmm. of the movie. Yes. The how plain and simple uh, the whole plot is, and also uh, each scene and the the characters and and the uh, the pure simplicity and the beauty and the power of mm -hmm. that simplicity. So yeah, yeah. Enlighten us, and what did what did you think about that? And any other points in watching this movie, which will be helpful to our audience? Right, um, mm. I definitely echo what you just said. Simplicity really is power in this film because if we look at the a lot of the modern films that we make, no matter in Hollywood or in other parts of the world, we tend to um, build up a very complicated complicated storyline. We want people perhaps to be so engrossed in the story and that's probably one of the reason why people try to add a thing here and there, make it make story complicated. Mm -hmm. um, but then this movie, however, it came really, really beautiful mm -hmm. because it's simple. Mm -hmm. The story storyline is not something that you have to really uh, put your brain around and try to interpret every segment of it. It's, it's just like um, what will happen maybe to your neighbor, mm -hmm. as simple as that. Mm -hmm. Like it's like everyday life you can you can see in, in, the, in the frame of this movie. Mm -hmm. And the choice of having a, to center the story on a child mm -hmm. um, magnified mm -hmm. the power. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and yeah, in um, Hollywood we have uh, plot-driven movies and mm -hmm. character-driven movies, and and very often uh, not a lot of power for the ambiance or mm -hmm. the the environment of the movie. Mm -hmm. And in so many movies, this is in so many ways this movie is driven by the environment, mm -hmm. and you are stuck in a monastery uh, mm -hmm. throughout the film. But the but the but the beauty of what is happening and the character the, that simplicity is not about the environment also and also on the characters and the main character being this this innocent little kid yes. and a fantastically played by this uh, amazing actor who eventually became a great child actor and then he retired and all that but, uh, but, but so so and it will really brings to mind what Jesus said and you know about being like a child yeah, you know being like a ch being like children to uh, to to uh, to uh, to enter the kingdom of God, uh, and and that's what really stand out to me too. Mm -hmm. And 
Uh, another thing, uh, which I think was very clever, um, you know, even though we said the movie is simple, uh, there are some clever, uh, subtle plots built into the movie. For example, mm -hmm. you know, I was looking at the movie, it's predominantly all male characters. There is mm -hmm. one woman uh, or another woman, you know, a couple of them appear here and there, but it is a male, you know, tall man bringing up a, a child, a male child, right? That's yeah. the story. But the, the central driving plot of that movie uh, is about motherhood. Uh, the, the, that's the central question mm -hmm. it, is, uh, it is addressing. And, and it's all about, uh, you know, finding my mother and even the climax. Mm -hmm. and, and I thought that was an irony. And, and it's a very clever way of, of a male-dominated <laughs> movie talking about womanhood and yeah. motherhood. What, what, what did you get out of that, about the, their depiction of mother or their search for mother? How do, how do the audience resonate with that in a way? I think the the yes, like you said, the cleverness is to the uh, the director chose such a setting to for the story to unfold, and then when you have a dominant um, one a group of people who are the same in this case all male actor uh, actors, you kind of. Uh, it increased the intensity and the longing for the opposite. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah. So, so, so I think in this environment, it intensified the little kid in, 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 the, in the character of this little child, and his longing for mother intensified. So as an as a, as a audience, as a, as a viewer of the movie, our emotion ties to this little kid, mm -hmm. and our emotion will rise and fall, rise and fall with mm -hmm. this with with the with this uh, little child, mm -hmm. that's what makes it so powerful. And then that, like you said, idea of motherhood is um, the the mother is this figure that um, that spread out this 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 uh, emotion aura of mm -hmm. love, mm -hmm. care, warmth, and this and in a way increase the intensity of the longing for the child in yeah. the in the movie yeah and even the tall men they are also talking about, about their, their mother, mother. yeah <laughs> yes. so the, chi the child is surprised that oh we all have, have mother, mother. <laughs> and even in this scene where uh, he meets we have to say it it's not exactly a spoiler alert but even when he meets Jesus uh, and his conversation is about your mother uh, you know um, and it again going back to very Catholic root of the <laughs> movie because that's very important for Catholic mysticism, right? The yeah. idea of uh, Blessed Virgin Mary. Yeah, a uh, feminine enigmatic presence. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah that presence uh, or, or that manifestation of God is very important. Uh, and, and, you know, there are some dialogues where it is, uh, uh, you know, I'll just read some of this, you know, where the child asks, are all mothers in heaven? Um, mm. And that's where all the mothers go. Uh, mm. And then uh, mothers, what do they do? Uh, and they give. They always give. And what do they give? They give themselves. And they give their lives and the light of their eyes to the mm -hmm. children until they are old and wrinkled. So then the child mm -hmm. asks, um, are they, and they are ugly? You know? <laughs> <laughs> say, no, mothers are never ugly. ugly. And this is, a, a, this is a movie that's happening in a monastery with full of men talking about the uh, you know, again, the mm -hmm. ultimate uh, idea of, of femininity in, in, you know, in, mm -hmm. in, in being, a, um, being a mother. So yeah. I thought that was very clever. Yeah, and when I think mm -hmm. when they have such an intense longing for uh, this mother figure or this feminine figure, feminine, uh, female enigmatic presence, mm -hmm. the bond between the, within, within their own order become so intense as well. And there's this very, um, very, very strong warmth coming out of their, their community. That mm -hmm. is almost when you compare their community, uh, you juxtapose them with the surrounding secular mm -hmm. environment, mm -hmm. their power comes very, it becomes very obvious. Mm -hmm. The strength of a faith, strength of the love, stem out of the, their face. That's right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So. yeah, like you said, that adds 
color <laughs> uh, to the male characters of the mm. movie too because yeah. you know you're juxtaposing this this two different world or two different idea mm-hmm. uh, of sainthood in a way I- from a catholic perspective mm-hmm. um and also their uh, you know even the monks uh, their innocence and their idea of serving mm-hmm. uh, people without expecting any reward and the way they are taking care of this child unexpectedly came to their path right like they they have no experience um and even in in that way i could see a lot of symbolism uh, in the sense uh when they had this orphan child and he, they are trying to find uh, somebody <laughs> who can <laughs> yeah uh, who can take care of the child and and in so many ways you can see a nativity kind of depiction you know you they go from one house to another mm-hmm. as if there is a room in the inn like the jesus story and everybody yeah. say no 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 and then you have a Herod kind of a character who you know who turns out to be eventually the villain yes. kind of uh, in that movie where he says oh maybe I'll take her of the baby uh, he wanted the baby but then they realize that you know he, he cannot give it to him he's an abusive person uh, and in so so you have this you know the nativity scene in a way very catholic way yeah. um even the even there is a scene where you know Uh, Marcelino is taken to the marketplace and he creates a whole a big commotion uh, because of his innocence <laughs> and it was almost like a temple cleansing scene because everything is messed up yeah. and uh, so you can see the gospel story parallel to uh, Marcelino's story unfolding yes um, which is what i said it's a very clever way of uh, even though it's a very simple movie but a very clever subtle way of intertwining some of the gospel stories with uh, this uh, story which apparently has nothing to do with that anyway and um, talking about that uh, another point uh, you know the this uh, hidden character called Manuel mm. uh, uh, who is an imaginary friend uh, uh, he uh, Marcelino uh, eventually comes across so what what did you think about of that character which you don't obviously see in the screen but but it is an important role uh, anyway I I really as a, as an audience I really feel that this imaginary friend really intensified the the connection between Marcelino and the, the ultimate one he encountered this big man mm. upstairs yeah. which is a, yeah. really a statue of uh, yeah. uh, uh, Jesus hanging on a on a, on a crucif- being crucified yeah. on the cross and so that this uh, he he in the beginning when he encountered this beautiful mother on the field and he that's the first time he know oh there's another kid like my age also exist yeah. and he start to imagine this friend exists right next to him and he start to develop a relationship with him and this relationship go on and on and on and on and then kind of climax when he plug up plug up his courage and went upstairs because the, one of the brother told him You don't go up there because yeah. there's a big man up there. Yeah. If you go up there, you're going to be taken away. Yeah. And yeah. so I don't know if that's a I Yeah, you, you know yeah. exactly. And in the, the to me that character, the hidden character achieves two th- one thing it is a, it is also a psychological development of Manuel. Uh, sorry. Um, um Marcelino. Uh, Marcelino because it's so difficult as a filmmaker to 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 show us what this little kid is thinking unless there is another character opposite if it is a novel i can write oh by the way marcelino was thinking about his mother talking about i mean or he was expecting this he, this was his desire but in the movie there's no way to say <laughs> what he is thinking unless you have another character but if you introduce too many characters the simplicity is gone then it becomes another movie mm-hmm. so they have this imaginary character which is kind of used to Uh, to tell us the psychological development of Marcelino um, yes. in a way that's a very clever cinematic uh, uh, symbol um, you know trope i would say um but also uh, i mean it, to me it's a very clear depiction of jesus himself manuel and emmanuel whose god is with us mm-hmm. uh, in a way manuel is here right yeah. with us all always it, always with you <laughs> exactly that, yes. that's the idea of uh, of the christian idea of god god coming down and being with us always so so manuel and you don't need a lot of uh, conjecture to that but it's very clearly the symbolism of jesus 
uh, being present with Marcelino and with all of us. Uh, and yeah, to, it added to the spiritual dimension of the movie. Again, I thought it was a very clever mm -hmm. way of doing it. And uh, we just alluded to it. Um, there is always that suspense too. Even though, mm. uh, again, now even though we said that very simple movie, when you when you take it layer by layer, you see there is this. Uh, there's always this suspense, right? Yeah. Oh, you know, don't go upstairs. Uh, you know, so right from the beginning, we are be a tall. Don't go upstairs. There's something is going to happen to you, mm. which is not good, right? Like it's a, it's a. It's a way of ominous way of presenting something up in the attic. Yeah, almost uh, fairy tale like. That's right. <laughs> yeah, which is which I thought was yeah. good because you needed some suspense, you know, because as audience, I want I want him to go upstairs. Yes. I don't care whether it is dangerous yeah. or not. Yeah, <laughs> to discover what there is. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So so that suspense and and eventually, you know, his decision to go in there kind of changes the the whole dynamics of the movie. Uh, and this encounter he has, like you mentioned, with the Christ figure. Um, now that brings us to the uh, the towards the end of the movie, and we don't want to give out the climax, uh, you know. But I, apparently, I expect this kind of a movie review. I expect people have already read it, uh, but without telling what really happened at the end. Um, it was very controversial. Like, and I can see that if I just watched that movie from. As a, as an ordinary person looking at it just purely as a as a film, um, I might have some problem with what happened at mm -hmm. the end, right? Like you know. But at the same time, I watch it with a spiritual lens, uh, mm -hmm. and and then it becomes a profound thing that happened at the end. It's it's very enlightening and it, it's very thought provoking, uh, uh, you know. Uh, um, without giving out too much, we can say that Marcelino mm -hmm. is sleeping in the hand uh, of God. You mm -hmm. know, that, that, that's very, very beautiful way. So, yeah, give me some insights on that. We have this conversation about how, how, do, how do you look at it as a spiritual person, as a Christian? Mm -hmm. um, how do we come to terms with what is happening to Marcelino and that final climatic scene? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Yeah, I think for me, Personally, I see Marcelino from the time he was born up to this point. It's a really a process. He's been searching mm. as a, as a, even a little kid. Mm. Initially, I think because he's living a, in a, in an environment full of monks, mm. and we may expect that oh, this kid being influenced by so many brothers uh, in the order um, that he may be a monk in in when he grows up, it seems that this is a trajectory. And then and then we have this scene where he encountered a mother on the field, a mm. mother calling out her child, and he started to have this imaginary friend. Mm. And this is, I think, a symbolic way he embarked already on a journey mm. with having a relationship with a, f a, a, a figure that he cannot mm. see, cannot touch, and mm. he never really know incarnationally that he exists. And then the, the, the plot sort of going uphill toward climax where he go up the stair and then encounter this man and then having this incarnational experience with this figure mm. that we, he himself called God mm. because Jesus asked him, mm. I'm giving out a little bit about the plot. Sure, yeah, yeah, yeah but that's then part of it. Jesus, yeah. yeah, Jesus said, do you know who I am? Mm. And then the, the kids say, you are God. Mm. So he identifies right away. And then at the very end, so we sort of going with Marcelino on this journey to discover what it is really in the deep of the deep in his heart. What does his soul long, longs for? And well, not to give too much away, but we will see what he really longed for at the end of this film. And then what um, I he really... Um, not in a way, not only in a way inspires me, but oh, it gave me a verse from the 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 Bible, uh, in Psalms one thirty nine eleven uh, verses eleven to twelve. I'm going going to read a little bit here. Sure, and here in Psalms one thirty nine verses eleven to twelve, it says, "Surely the darkness will hide me, and the light become night around me. Even the darkness will not be dark to you." The night will shine like the day, for the darkness is as light to you. 
So in our perspective, I think we have we put a separation between um, life and in this case falling asleep, mm. or we're putting a, a, a separation between men and mm. women. Mm. But in God, in God's perspective, mm. like the psalmist mm. told us here, everything can be light. Mm. Everything can be darkness. The darkness is clothed in the light. Mm. And they are the same in the eyes of God. Mm. So we're reaching with Marcelino at the very end of the film. We're reaching this climax where there's a revelation coming mm. that we should probably view these things in life in a very different lens mm. so that it will alter, alter us all, that will cleanse us all, and it will elevate all of us to a different, perhaps a higher spiritual, uh, spiritual level or spiritual plane. Wow, uh, that's, that's even more profound. I don't want to say any more word uh, <laughs> because that, that Psalms 139 uh, verses 11 and 12, the, I yeah. believe. Yeah, mm -hmm. so that kind of explains the climax of the movie where darkness itself becomes light in the presence of God, or mm -hmm. um, uh, e e even the death itself becomes life, right? That's the irony mm -hmm. of Christianity, and thank you. I mean, that, that's actually, uh, to me, the crux of the film. That, that's the message of the film, in a way, the story of Marcelino. Uh, we strongly encourage you to watch this movie, uh, and it has been an iconic movie, 1955, but the many versions of that be made in different countries, actually. Um, it was based on a novel, but different versions of the movie available, but this is the original version, 1955. Uh, Miracle of Marcelino. Hope you will really enjoy it and, and have a profound encounter with uh, uh, whomever Marcelino had that encounter. So yes. thank you. Thank you.